on a made radio history. We're gonna There's a new duo on the air who themselves are a hot topic. Their names are Corell and Andrew. Joining us now is Corell Boulay, radio talk show host. Host Corell and Andrew taking their message to anyone who will listen. Corell and Andrew live. Uh, no, no for putting Corell and Andrew on the radio. Interviewing David Hall. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, Carell says the things that need to be said. He's not afraid to walk right up to someone and say what he really thinks about how they look or what their opinion is or what they believe. Uh, and Andrew cuts off Carell at the knees surgically every single time. It's great. David Hall is a programming genius. I'm Terry Ray Elmer in the KFI News Center. When I first started working with them, I started calling everyone I know and I said, get me out of here. Get me a new job, get me a new shift, get me away from these two men. They are a little strange, just a little bit strange. But I started to warm up to them, even though the big one dress is kind of odd. KFI from the very beginning has been all about being different. And I got to tell you, there's nobody more different than Corell and Andrew. Two for dinner. <laughs> A number nine. Number nine. What are all these buttons here? Number nine. Okay. And what kind of drink would you like with that number nine? Diet Coke? Are you trying to cut down on your calories? What is a number nine exactly? It's a fillet of fish. You know that's deep fried. If you're trying to cut back on your calories, you might want to go with a salad. Are you sure, Rosie? I'm just trying to help you. It, the fun thing about Corell and Andrew is that it's a, it's a good story, it's a good success story. Because Corell and Andrew had not done talk radio before they were on KFI. And the person who was producing them initially sort of chastised Corell for sending his tape in because he basically said, you're not ready. And that, that's understandable that he would say that because they hadn't really had any background. When you look up flamboyant in the dictionary, there is Corell's bleach, blonde, short, less weight than before head and andrew uh pr probably can tolerate much more easily not being the center of attention but is the smartest person in the room hi my name's mary sulfur i'm from lake charles i i just love listening to y'all it just it just puts me in a state of rapture now i have two children and, and i was just wondering how did y'all get started in this well mary that is a good question I mean, I was out doing my music at the time. I was out singing, promoting a record. I actually did a record. When I say I, I mean I. I executive produced it. I got it distributed. I did the artwork for it, had the photographs taken, everything, but you know, pretty much pressed the thing myself and carry it to the stores. And it received some success, which shocked a lot of people, and myself included. And I was out touring uh, with my show, uh, doing it in Chicago, I believe, with Grace Jones and a bunch of other people. And John Jellybean Benitez saw me. He really helped Madonna. He was instrumental in her early career. And who didn't want to be Madonna? If I ran away, I'd never have strength to go very far. How could they hear, How could they hear the beating of my heart? My name is Myrna and I'm a 30-something hairdresser from Montclair and I was just wondering Andrew, do you mind that Carell is always talking over you and he's much more flamboyant than you are? <laughs> well Myrna, nice hair, but let me tell you, 
Andrew is quite happy with the spotlight that he gets. I mean, Andrew's a stay-at-home writer. And Andrew is a writer. Andrew, I understand that you actually uh, wrote a children's novel. Yeah, a couple Ooh, of them, actually. Yeah. Um, as an entertainment journalist for the last 20 years, I still write for Billboard magazine. I'm their soundtrack and film score editor. I gotta tell you, Andrew is a very prolific writer. He really, really is. He's just completed his second children's novel, and then he's written several screenplays, and they're all very, very good, but their storylines are a bit avant-garde. I think some of his best work are these two stage plays that he's written specifically for me. I mean, you don't know what it's like to have a partner so dedicated to progressing your talent and your future that they take the time to write two very good projects for you to star in. When someone does that for you, how do you repay that kindness except by taking that work and making it the absolute best that it can be? Hey, F, uh, stimulating talk radio it is, Curl and Andrew live. I am Carell. And I'm Andrew. And we're here it's 7 p.m. at one of the nation's most popular talk yeah, radio stations. 13-year-old girl who did not have to die. Her hosts, Carell and Andrew, talk about the same things all talk show hosts talk about, but these hosts are different. They are gay, and they're a couple. Well, they're a couple. They're, uh, they're man, wait, how do you say, man and husband? Boyfriend and boyfriend? I don't know. Uh, now, their rise in talk radio is absolutely meteoric. They've taken over the coveted afternoon drive time spot on KFI. And, oh, yeah, they're gay, and they are life partners. And for a uniquely gay point of view. For the Our first time ever anywhere in the country, an openly gay male couple now has an afternoon show. The first openly gay couple to ever host a radio talk show, Corell and Andrew Please. took over the... Hey, I have to ask you guys, because I know you're a couple on the air and off the air. That must be really difficult to have to work together all day and then go home and have to live with each other. <laughs> No, no, it's pretty easy. I just don't speak to him. Yeah, exactly. You know, if I had a dime for every time someone asked us about this living and working together, living and working together, how do you not kill each other? I think the people that ask those questions are people that are in bad relationships. Awesome. I mean, I mean, we are so strong together. You know, now I have to stay with this fool. You know, <laughs> we were in the works of a divorce and everything, and now I've got to, I got to get rid of it. It's terrible. We always hear about the gay agenda. No one ever carbon copied us on that, so I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I thought it was go to the gym, is. work out, buy some flowers, get some new draperies, shampoo the rug, have a fabulous dinner, and go to work. But Carell and Andrew say there's been a backlash to going mainstream. They get more hate mail now from gay people than straight because they apparently don't tow the traditionally radical party line. I think it was a uh, part of the problem that that Ellen had. And she felt the big uh, burden that the entire gay community put upon her as to be the representative for everyone but you know gay people are made up of everybody and we have completely different views than the mainstream gay community so you're trying to say that a family value is a a wife at home who's pregnant a man no who's that, off at that's work, what i'm saying we'll never about have his slippers he'll no i'll say that we'll home. never have that family that that family does not exist it exists only but, on television but what you're saying is that that's what they consider uh family values yes a man yes, we, at work, yes a woman who stays at home and who has children and plays yes. cards with the with I the truly ladies. believe that George W. Bush would, would like to see families go back to that. And if your daughter gets pregnant, she carries it to term and you raise it there in the house. His idea of what a family is, is that leave it to beaver mentality. I don't think he's modernized his view. How could he? A look at the family he grew up in. Hi, I'm Margaret from Miami Beach. And listen, as a single woman, I find it hard to get everything done in a 24-hour period. So I'd like to ask Carol and Andrew just one thing about time, and that is, since you guys spend a lot of time traveling, going on location, doing all kinds of things, what would you like to spend more time doing? You know, it's been an interesting journey from point A to point B. Our little stops along the way, and I don't think we're at point C yet. So we're writing a book called Guarded Optimism, Andrew and I. It chronicles our journeys along the way. So we're going to get that finished, get it out, get it published. Then, of course, we're going to get Andrew's screenplays actually produced as films. I mean, because every single one of them deserves to be a film, so we've got to get those produced and get those out there. And then I would really like to go into television much more. You know, maybe even do a talk show, move over Rosie O'Donnell and Oprah, here comes Carell sort of thing, and uh, get into feature films. I really feel that Hollywood is ready. You know, I think Hollywood wasn't ready, but now with the success of Will and Grace and Ellen and everything else, I really think that Hollywood is really ready for someone as unique as myself and as a duo, a duo as interesting as Andrew and I. So the sky is really the limit when it comes to what's next. Uh, perhaps most surprising to Carell and Andrew is that one of their fans is Dr. Laura. Yeah. <laughs> because our show is really about giving people what they want to know.